to interpret scores from the extreme demand avoidance questionnaire if you are a parent or a therapist who is concerned that your child or client is pathologically demand avoidant. Okay, so remember this isn't a diagnostic tool, but it's often used as a way to inform a practitioner or a parent as to whether their child would fit this neurotype. So if a child scores 50 or above and is between the ages of 5 and 11, they are flagged at high risk for being pathologically demand avoidant. Between the ages of 12 and 17, it's 45. However, as a coach and a practitioner myself, I will tell you that I've worked with dozens of families whose children do not meet 50 and they're over the age of 5, yet they still have clear signs of pathological demand avoidance. So. What we want to think about is a distribution and the patterns that I've seen. Okay, so for children who score 60 or above, these are generally the children who are flagged early for autism, meaning 2, 3, 4, or ADHD, and they have been approached using traditional behavioral modification strategies for autism or ADHD, and it has failed miserably and their child has gone into nervous system burnout and started to have more pronounced demand avoidance due to nervous system activation. And those children are usually not as high masking as the children on the other end of the distribution, and it can be below 50. And these children are often more high masking, two versions of one a self, right? They're completely appearing typical, fine and compliant at school or with a grandparent, and then are a completely different version of themselves at home. These children are often not diagnosed or flagged for autism, ADHD, or anything else in their early years, but rather viewed as a behavioral problem, and their parents often feel extremely gaslit. So I want to identify these patterns, and then in video three, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of using the EDAQ and what we need to improve upon.